Welcome to another episode of Driving to the Riz with your favorite hosts, Inelia and Larry. Yay! And of course, Peavy's here today. Who? Peavy. Yeah, she's with us. She's our constant companion. She is. Pretty much since the day she's been collected, collected <laughs> until this moment. I don't think she spent two minutes away. Maybe five. Well, we left her in the house earlier. The shaman shack. That was the longest time. Yeah. Maybe half hour. Yeah. About half an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I was missing her a lot. You were? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she I only left her because week? she was happily and um, well cared for. Nice. She was sitting there on Fred's lap having a hydrogen session. Oh, of Ground course. gas session. Of course, yeah. yes. She does like that. Yes. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. I know uh, our experience with it has been all, nothing but positive. It's been extremely positive. And my brain <coughs> injuries <coughs> and getting fixed. Yeah, I was listening to a um, couple of gals walking down the beach. Mm-hmm talking a little bit about their experiences with it, and they've had amazing reaction responses to it as well. Perfect. So I suggest anyone who has the opportunity should uh, definitely give it a look-see. Yes. One of the books that we're reading, which is called Something About Water, remember? <laughs> it's not actually called Something About Water. <laughs> um, what, Dancing with Water? Singing yeah, with water. Singing or dancing. Singing or dancing. Or running with water. <laughs> running with water. <laughs> something with water. <laughs> dancing. Pretty pretty sure it's dancing. I think you said somebody, you said that before it was dancing with water, but I'm not sure. I've never read it. Uh, the cover. The, co- the cover. Just hear, hear you just hear you me reading, read it. Yeah. Read it to you each night. Yeah, we when usually get tired. A, a few chapters in. Yeah, we haven't read a lot this um, last couple of weeks. Yeah. Do you remember when we were reading the alien abduction books? And I kept oh, on falling asleep hilarious. after two pages. Yeah. God, my mouth would stop working. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't happen with this book. But this book is so dense, nutrient dense informationally, you know? Mm-hmm. And guess what it, what chapter on right now is about hydrogen. And cool. positive ions of hydrogen, oh, negative right. ions yeah, of hydrogen. Yeah. And One of our friends actually hydrogens. gave us three Salt lamps. Yes, thank you, Ashley. By uh, friends of their parents, so. Oh, they should be good. Yeah. So we can have s- have it. a good supply of negative ions running around. Yes, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Today. Oh, by the way, I ordered you something out of that Dancing with Water book. Oh, you did. Yeah, they have some pretty cool stuff. Oh yeah, what you to get? make water that's structured. Um, and then you can, we can put the structured water in our hydrogen thingy mm-hmm. and it'll hold more hydrogen. So nice. you can drink that water. So what did you get? Well, I'll have to show you when it shows up. I don't, don't know how to say what it is because it's in wateries. Oh, wateries. One thing's, one thing's a shungite sphere. And another thing is a, some kind of a crystalline egg shaped vase of some kind. Another thing is a um, a helical coil of some <laughs> kind. <laughs> and there's, you bought trinkets. There's, no, 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 no. <laughs> you bought stuff. Well, actually, stuff yesterday to... or the day before, I used that uh, wand that we got. Yeah, the lemma wand. Yeah. Yeah, I used that on the on the water before I put it through the machine. Right. And it did feel very satisfying. Yeah, it's supposed to create a good matrix in the water that holds more of those little hydrogen um, ions or atoms or whatever in in space. Mm-hmm. So you have more of them, more of them available to you know go wherever they go, and then you 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 um, you saturate the spaces in your body that hold hydrogen reserves. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> it's not what you think. Uh, so, I for, I lost my train of thought with the hydrogen <laughs> and all the technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I was saying, structured water is very important. Figure out how to get some structured water into your life. 
Hydrogen. Definitely. Hydrogen. Hydrogen available to your body is very important. Get some into your life. Yes. Yes. Those are two very important things. It Mm -hmm. alters your health dramatically. It does. And we don't make any money selling anything that makes water structured or hydrogen in your bubbles. We probably should start. What? Making some money selling things that do that. Oh, that would be good, yeah. You know what, though? Huh? Today is Hallow's End. Hallow's End. Yeah, that's... Halloween? No, that's October. Hallow's End is the 31st of October. That's and Halloween. furthermore... What? We had a party! I remember, I was like, uh, I don't want to go to no party. I just want to work. I you wanna, just wanted to be in I front wanna, of the TV. <laughs> no, we were, remember we were building battery box. Oh, that's right, yeah. Had all the guys outside, finally making some progress. Got a nice, warm, sunny afternoon. Working in our t-shirts. Putting the, you know, walls on the end and, oh my gosh. Such a simple thing. So many options. And maybe it was party time. And then party time. So, you dressed me up. And you were dressed to the nines. Is that the right word? I have no idea. Or the tens. I was a glammy witch. You were a glamorous witch. witch. Yes. And if you've seen any of the pictures on Talk With You Now, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> you are a very, very nice glammy witch. Yeah. And uh, it was nice to have a Halloween party. And it was an interesting observation. One of the newer members of the tribe I suppose. yeah you know they haven't been to a party haven't before been to a party uh, like one of our parties one of before. our parties and people whenever they have the first time they have to one of our parties they always comment about oh my god it's I mean, so much fun and nobody's drinking or taking drugs it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> and i forget i, I forget was like what are you talking not about normal sometimes <laughs> yeah that's well, just it isn't the way normal, we roll but it isn't normal to drink and take drugs that's what's not normal Oh, but it's been normalized it's been because normalized, it's huh? how to possess people with demons and make them do stay stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's our, no other word. <laughs> That's That's word. I remember we were listening to a story of this one boy who um he had he had a friend, has a friend. One friend only? Just one friend? Well he has a friend. He probably has many friends. Okay. But this particular friend uh-huh. he said re- regressed from being a normal adult, 40-plus-year-old, to a 20-year-old. After he got, oh, what was the other words we heard about it? You call it um, cooties Coody. and... Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, right. Yes. The, he called the, it cooties the coo- Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> he called it he cooties got, Kool-Aid. He got, the, he got the cooties Kool-Aid in his arm. Yeah. And that made him sick for a few days. And then he got his that. second dose of cooties Kool-Aid in his arm. And, and after that... He decided, now's a good time to start drinking again. After 20, 30 years. After 20 or 30 years of not drinking. Yeah. Now he's a alcoholic again. <laughs> because. Demons, man. Demons, man. I suppose if I got that Kool-Aid in How my arm, I'd do that too. How do you feel about this? You know that we talked about last week a little bit about it. Uh, Archbishop. Vigano, Vigano. Yeah. Archbishop he, Vigano. He yeah. actually. Uh, stated that for the Catholics, at least, you know how Catholics get baptized when they're born. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, well, I don't actually. Well, they do not when they're born, but a few days after, a few weeks after. Okay. Um, and um, he called uh, the jabs the baptism of the devil, a devil's baptism. Yeah, I remember he did say that because it has aborted fetuses in it. Uh, material from aborted fetuses and um, other stuff that marks you and all sorts of what some of the names for these things and materials they use in this luciferase is one of the ingredients i mean come on guys come on guys and one of them is 666 those patents yeah 666 some of the uh, processes via which the Vaccine or the cootie juice? (laughs) (laughs) Cootie juice, yeah. Cootie juice will, uh, you know, affect your body in a fashion. I don't know. I mean, the signs are pretty much all there for all the Catholics to see or anybody 
Yeah. To see for that matter. I know there was a, to be a big reveal in October, and I saw with mine own eyes. Yes. Many, many reveals completely where it's like, let's say, X, Y, Z. This is to kill you. Don't yes. do it. Yes. There's no other reason. There's no other reason but to kill you. Exactly. That was quite impressive, and many wasn't it? different languages, from yes. Catholics yeah. to <clears throat> Fox yeah. News to Spanish to Italian to EU ministers to... I saw it all over. I didn't... Um, it, it felt like the the ball got rolling and the the open is open and it's coming and coming and coming and coming. It's like a floodwater kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, everyone who's heard it, when you hear something that shatters your reality, oftentimes you'll double down on your attempt to make yourself right. Make yourself right. Right. And mm -hmm. defend your position. Yes. And ignore it. So I think it's, I think the big shock didn't arrive as I thought it was going to, but I know I saw the reveals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? Yep. I could see it. Yeah. In, in, look, also in, by people that I didn't expect, like there was a press release, uh, by a person in the European Commission. Yeah. They talked about it and, um. They didn't hold any punches. No. It was just exactly it like it. Yep. X, Y, Z. Yeah. And then some, like, a nun did it. A, a nun, yeah. Uh, the archbishop did it. And there's some podcast guy. What's his name? Oh, that that's uh, one of the, oh, I can't recall his name. But he's very famous in his realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's the, someone the, listened to by not just a few, by that, millions. millions, you know? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying by different languages, different yeah, audiences, different right? Different audiences, different languages, all got it. Yeah. All within the last week or so. And, it's uh. It's like being different demographics are being told. <laughs> but it's interesting that it doesn't catch, you know? It's, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't catch. catch. The, the thing that will catch hasn't catched. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a tricky world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a tricky world. And now we're coming into November, November and December and January. It's like, will it become impossible to continue life in a way that you're accustomed to i mean i think we've grown accustomed to different things mm -hmm. so they're normal normal to go to the store or go somewhere and see 90 percent of people wearing a mask for example it's not for me <laughs> even even what even um still this year for Halloween, you know, there were places on our res, they didn't want people coming by mm. trick-or-treating. <laughs> and they had uh, central places to go. So you, I, I, I don't know. It's just like making extra efforts, you know, to try and continue the thing. Mm. Even though no one's had any reactions <laughs> in two years, negatively, except for from jabs and stuff. Yeah. I'm just, uh, it's still stump, it's just, it stymies me. And so it's more and more and more feeling like there's two worlds and you're in one, I'm, we're in one and they're in a different one. Yes. That's and true. it's almost like I can't see what's going on in their world anymore. Right. Right. It's so hard to understand to me too, because we, I mean, we've educated ourselves and uh, uh, researched and looked into the claims that certain individuals have made mm -hmm. about both the the existence of viruses and also the non-existence of viruses. And it's all wide open. They don't actually exist. 
Well, viruses, to say that don't exist, maybe is like you got to define what you mean by viruses. The, the, I think what medical, we're talking about the, is a virus as a invisible germ that makes you sick. That doesn't exist. No. A virus as a particle that's part of the decomposition process. They of the have cell. a different name. They're not called Exosome, viruses. Exosome, yeah. thing like that. <laughs> that's a thing. It is, <clears throat> but little bits not an of infectious thing. agent. Right. Right. <sighs> I still I remember the day you said, "Oh, I followed that." Energy line. Energy line. There's no. There's no virus. <laughs> I know. I'm like, no, honey, no, no honey, don't say it. I know. The first thing that went through my mind when I saw that, I thought, oh, dang it. Now it's going to make it even harder for people to listen to the message of empowerment because they're going to hear me say there's viruses don't exist and they're going to say, oh my God, I'm not going to listen to the message of empowerment from this woman. <laughs> no, she's a nutter, you know? She's a nutter, yeah. I was like, no, no. But then we researched it and then you found Dr. The Cohen. Funny at thing the time. is, it's not it's even new. It's not even new, no. It's Old news. Yes, very old news. People, you know, courts saying oh, yeah, no, they measles. don't exist. Yeah, measles yeah. lost its court battle. Yeah. And um work that people have done, people who believed in it, trying to, you know, get recreate or whatever. And it's like, when I, after you do all that research, I was like, wow. I mean, I hadn't even made the jump of, oh, COVID doesn't exist. From from that to viruses don't exist. Hadn't even made that jump yet, and it, but it's like when I looked at after that, I started looking for energy lines for other viruses. Like it doesn't exist. They don't exist. They don't. There's no some not tiny little invisible thing that creates sickness in people. I mean, people get sick from frequencies, that vibrations. They get sick from poisons and from. Toxins and even toxins. their own thoughts. I know toxins, the, their own thoughts, and what are those th- things? Uh, parasites. They get parasites, sick from parasites, worms. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes, they say that that comes because of the imbalance in your body, and the worms have a a role a role to play. And when they get out of control, it's because your body is weak. Yeah. Your body and your weak, body includes your environment. Right. right. There's just like a big synergetic yeah, system. It's not. Exactly. We're not in isolation. This parasite is the yeah. thing that got you sick. You were sick and the parasite came because you were mm-hmm. sick. Or your environment's sick and the parasite <clears throat> st- of you populating your environment gets into your body. Boom. You're, you're over. Yeah. So, um. Or poisons. You know? So currently, you know, there are people that get sick. And it seems like they have new symptoms, even though most of the symptoms that they describe as the new symptoms aren't new symptoms it's at all. It's the same list. It's like, the same list. I can't like, taste or I can't whatever. Ha- I don't have any taste. Yeah. The taste is one of the COVID things, but it was a I cold. had that for it used flu. To be I had that for flu, cold. cold. That. Yeah. My tongue like, felt raw and it didn't have any taste anymore. Yeah. That's not a new thing. No, it's ancient. <laughs> my dad and my mom got sick. Yeah. Remember? They had spent a year pretty well isolated, isolated. and uh, pretty much in terror and mm-hmm. constant um, tension and argument. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that can't make anybody yeah, healthy. Because my dad absolutely believed one thing and my stepmother completely opposite. Yeah. All the way from from Trump, all the way through oh, COVID, yeah. everything. Even the newspapers are really their opposites. <laughs> oh my gosh, it yeah. was really, really bad. And yeah. they had got themselves to a state, a really high tension state. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, they did get sick. They did. My stepmother went to the fair, be a judge. She was around thousand people. And I can see now that spike, the spike stuff, yeah. most definitely exists, exists, and, and it most definitely affects affects people. And that seems like if you haven't got one of the cootie Kool Aids in your arm, <laughs> if you don't have a cootie Kool Aid in your arm, it seems like you are more sensitive to it. Yeah, to me, it does seem like that. Or if spikes. you're not surrounded by it all the time. 
something and you and you know we've like been trying to put our finger on it follow that energy line. okay if you follow that energy line what that is that's affecting us because we had it today mm -hmm. we went yeah. to our party and nobody there is jabbed yeah nobody mm -hmm. there but some come from the city where they're exposed to tons of people yeah and uh i felt it you felt it our friends felt it their throats start to get tightened up yeah there was also lots of people coming to the door for treats. Yeah, I'm not blaming any one person or anything like that. I'm not trying to assign blame. I'm just saying exposure. Yeah. We had exposure to something. Yeah. Shedding. And shedding. And it tightens up my throat. Yeah. And it gave you a headache. And Fred had the same thing. I don't know about the rest of them, but mm -hmm. I know I felt it and I know when it started. And it's I know a toxin. what solved it. It's some kind of toxin that we're re reacting to. And it's if you, definitely a toxin. If you follow the energy line of that, what do you find? That it's a toxin. Do you find anything? Just that it's a toxin? Yeah. And it messes up your electrical system, your energy field in your body. It's an ener it energy feels. field thing. Yeah, that's what it felt like to me too. I always thought it was energy fieldy because the relief from that silver spray is instant. It is. Yeah, it's very weird. And there's no logical reason for that. No. The silver spray we're talking about is colloidal silver. Colloidal silver in concentrate. Water. We got a 500 part per million one put into some water that makes it look like yellow. Mm -hmm. Then we spray it. Although I know there's other colloidal silvers. Yeah. And you know, you just got to try what you got, see if it works. If you spray it and you feel like an electric sensation down your spine, kind <laughs> of like, that's how yeah. it feels to me. How it about does? you? Yeah. It's an instant altering of something. It's like a shorting. If it feels like that, then it's working. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, also, we use our vitamins. Yes, the vitamin we take our vitamins. A, D, and K. We do. We have chocolate tea now and then. Don't, yeah. Elderberries. Mm -hmm. um, and that all seems to seems help to the support. symptoms, right? It seems yeah. to support, but alone it doesn't seem to. Mm. Maybe that might be because we don't do it every day either. That's true, we Maybe don't. Maybe if we were more diligent about that, we wouldn't be... Um... Although, um, I've heard a couple of people saying things like, I take it, I'm very diligent, and I take all my stuff and everything, and I still got the flu, you know? Mm -hmm. I've heard that too. Yeah. And that was from a person we were listening to who is in the city, you know? They are in the city. <clears throat> yeah, so... Um, it's all very confusing, It honestly. is very confusing, yeah. It's um, a tangled mess, a tangled web, and there's so many, so many different lines rolling through. It's difficult to be certain, mm -hmm. but the things that we know, we can know for sure. Yeah. That. I was chatting to. I've noticed in the past past two months, I have a friend who got jabbed, mm -hmm. and uh, we hang out, you know, like once or twice a day or something online. And I've noticed that she used to be really sharp, you know, mind-wise. Mm. Uh, she used to be very, very sharp, uh, very on top of things and everything. But I've noticed in the last two months that we often, I often have to repeat things three or four times before she will um, get it. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes, again the next day, Right, so like she showed me a lamp, um, and I said, "Oh, that's a really cool, funny lamp." Lamp. <laughs> it was a Halloween lamp, and we laughed about it. We talked about it for about half an hour because it was so cute. And then the next day, she did it again. Look, I want to show you something. You know, look at this lamp, and I was like, mm, "I didn't say anything," because I've noticed that that happens a lot. Hmm. Right. Senior moments. Is that what it feels like? Yeah. Yeah. Like almost like that. I mean, that's what another geez, friend was saying so too. Is he noticed a lot of his middle aged friends are starting to have senior moments that they never had and they're not old. I know. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what he'd She's said. She's not too. old. Yeah. We can watch the things happen. It's like a slow train wreck almost. Yeah. And, you know, you're at one point, at one one side of the thing, you're like, can we just get it over with? And the other side, you're like, well, this isn't bad. What's now? Mm. 
what's now I can tolerate without right. a lot of you know, <laughs> angst. Yeah. So it's almost like you got to be careful what you wish for. Yeah. That's kind of the feeling I get. What has impressed me this week or this month is so, so many people that were skirting on the edge of you know what this might be and this and the other is bad for you mm-hmm. you know it can't be good for you or even i'm not gonna it's it's, it's an experimental thing i'm not gonna put it in my body that type of thing mm-hmm. now they're saying this was created to kill you yeah they're not even they're pretending not even that pretending it might be anymore. a protection thing yeah it doesn't it doesn't and it doesn't and, and it's, it's strange, just gonna kill it? you yeah yeah it's like this is created to kill you to make you very very sick and to kill you that's it i've heard and that. you're gonna get as yep. many boosters as it takes to kill you. And I've it's like, it. what? Yeah, exactly. Just black and it's white, never, right out of their mouth. Never heard that before. No, no. But this month, is out the like disclosure, like I said. Yep. So as we go through November, I think probably, you know, it probably gets more intense. Yeah. November, probably December too. But... When it happens and how it happens, I guess we just have to be prepared. <laughs> I know I asked a Gaia for a card mm-hmm. that would give us uh, what what would be the uh, ideal way to, uh, not the ideal way to, what would be a good card to describe how we should approach November. Read it, read it. Are you interested? Oh, yes, definitely. So I want to tell you there's a little synchronicity here. Okay. While while you were sitting uh, doing your mystical work uh-huh. the other week, remember, uh-huh. remember yes, that? That yes. was like an age and a half ago. Yeah, about 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. On the third morning, third or second or third, third or fourth, something like that, <laughs> I started to pull cards for the people that came to sit to help yes. them have something. A focus, maybe? Focus, mm. to help them focus. Yeah. What would Gaia have you focus on while you're sitting? Mm-hmm. Again, that was also a kind of a request. Mm-hmm. Do this. It will help. And it did. And the card that I pulled for November yeah. is the same card that I first pulled for the first day on the sitting mm-hmm. that everyone came in for guidance. Nice. So Gaia will want who are sitting to use this card as guidance for their sitting. And Gaia would like us who are listening to use this card as guidance for November. Nice. The same thing. So it's a good synchronicity. Yeah. Can you describe the card? What do you see? It's beautiful. It's called... Well, I can't read what it's called. It's got a number eight. Strength, I think. It's called Strength. Yeah, Yeah. it's okay. Um, It has a, a lady, a woman. Is she young or old? She's both. Young she's, and old, and she's very beautiful. She's sitting on a um, a red cape on the in the woods, with flowers on her hair, smiling. And next to her, um, touching her face with a big smile, is a giant, giant dark wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Little Red Riding Hood, huh? Yes. Except for she's grown up, grown, and up. grown old, and in the woods with, the, in the woods with, with friend her the wolf. friend, the wolf. Yeah. Yeah. This is a very easy to misunderstand card because by looking at it, mm-hmm. one might think that you have to make friends with evil because the wolf has been given to us in society, in Western society, as something evil, especially with the Red Riding Hood story. He's a trickster, he's evil, he's nasty, you know, all these things. So you could misunderstand this card to mean, oh, you can't. You can trust the evil guy, right? And make friends with them. They're not going to hurt you, mm. right? Which obviously is not true. Right. This not, card is not about that. No, this card is not about that. Okay, tell us this what the card, card is, is about. This card is about strength, right? Now, I'll just read the text that comes with the card. Sure. It, it's illustrative. And think of November. Okay. Once upon a time, a young girl walked into the vast and fearsome forest. She went of her own volition 
and she wore a crimson cloak that made her easily visible to any creature that might observe her progress through the dark woods. Mm -hmm. And indeed, once upon a time, a great wolf was watching her. <laughs> you may think you know the rest of the story. Deception, violence, vengeance. That tale is meant to warn children not to go into the woods, or to seek adventure, or trust a wolf. <laughs> once upon a time, Two mighty hearts found the strength to change the story. The wolf refused to harm or betray the maiden. She refused to hate or fear the wolf, nor did she tame him. She just loved him for his wild self. She found a home in the forest and grew old there, the magical wolf always at her side. Strength is being firmly grounded in who you are, having courage for the tasks given you, and knowing the source of that courage, rather than letting circumstances defeat you, reach within yourself and draw forth the strength to make changes, face challenges, and move forward courageously. You don't do this by brute force, but through love. Strength comes from trusting your heart, mm. your pure heart. Right. At a glance, self-knowledge, courage fortitude, reserves of inner strength, bonds of loyalty and love. <laughs> Phoebe's being the wolf right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think about that? Well, I think that means that well, not like the wolf in the story. I mean, there are light beings who look like wolves. Mm -hmm. And if you're walking along and he looks like, oh, that's a wolf and he's evil, you know, don't be judging every book by its cover. That there are wolves who aren't. Mm -hmm. There are probably wolves who are. Yeah. This particular one in this particular story was not. not. Right. He was wild, but he wasn't He was evil. wild, right. I guess he represents wild strength, right? Yeah. He, he represents the strength that exists in the, all of us, really, yeah. if we tap into it. Right. He's not really afraid of, uh, am I going to get fired for not getting a Kool-Aid in my arm, for example? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give it a thought. Or she. in your arm. <laughs> yeah. There might be some challenges coming. Face them. Face them? You have it. You have it in you to face them. Mm -hmm. Trust your heart. I mean, that seems pretty good advice for whatever comes in November. Whatever happens, you know. You've been forewarned two and a half years, two years at least. <laughs> yes. Are we talking about this? Find your tribe. Yes. Which means, means what? What does find your tribe mean? Find people who... Your strength, you can say your strength is my strength and my strength is your strength with. Mm -hmm. People who um, are of your frequency, right? They're not into the victim aggressor. And, right, they um, may have some, but they're working through it. They're working yeah. on it. They're not like um, rejoicing in their victim aggressor. They're like, right. oh man, I got that. Or I got a little insight. bit of that victim shit. I got to get dumped that. I got to process yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, they're aware at least. <laughs> yeah. So finding a tribe are people who are similarly frequencied to yeah. you. Yeah. Right. And you support each other mm -hmm. in thought, deed, and action. We were listening to a podcast today. Yes, um, we were. I can't remember the name of the guy. Freeman. Freeman? Okay. He's uh, the oldest podcaster there is in the, um, in the, I guess the realm that we sort of like, populate sometimes. Yeah, free man. And he was talking about the types of tribes that we, we call tribe, right? Right. But the, tri the type of groups that will make it, that will be successful. In, um, you're making a lot of noise with your chair. <laughs> I was trying to help PB, sorry. Um, 
And it was really funny because he talked about the type of tribe that we are. Right. right. He, Everybody lives within 20 miles of each other. It's a decentralized tribe. He said, if you have a centralized um, group or tribe, you're all living in one place. You can call it a monastery or a nunnery or <laughs> a convent. You know, a convent or, a, yeah. or a commune. A commune, yeah. But if you're all 20 miles from each other, like maximum, so that you can actually walk in a day, because if you don't have gas, you're going to have to walk or use your bike. Um, then you can support each other through anything, right? right? So pull your resources, you know, and, and he was, I thought he was funny. He says, the men, men, you have to do this. You have to <laughs> make sure that you, you, you organize your resources and make sure that everybody's going to be fed and watered and sheltered. The women and the children, they're going to deal with other things. They're going to have to deal with education, with all mm-hmm. sorts of other things, right? Yeah. Like he's like, homeschool your kids. Yeah. Take them out of school, hurry up. <laughs> yeah. So that was interesting to me because when we've looked at different models of community, the one that we became comfortable wa- with was that one where everybody lives within, you know, 20 miles or whatever. It's half an hour, we say half an hour. Yeah, half an hour drive. Drive from each other. Right. And, um, and then learn how to not become a lone wolf because it's so easy for us, right? To oh, become boy, lone yeah. wolves. So I found to be that to be interesting. And he was also saying, just get out of the cities, get out of the cities. You shouldn't be in the city. Yeah, to be fair to be clear, it wasn't Freeman saying this, although he was agreeing. He was um interviewing another friend of his. Okay. I'll get the name, but I don't have it at the tip of my tongue. <laughs> okay. He's writing a book right now about how to have resilient type community, how yeah. to build community like we're talking about, a non-central, yeah. non-centralized mm-hmm. community. And, you know, he's going through the legwork of how you incorporate it or how you organize it or how you mm-hmm. fund it or how you... Yes. Giving it a lot of thought, spending yeah. a lot of time and energy to um, create a guide that might be a worthwhile thing. We'll have right. to look at it. I know we yeah. listened to him talk before. He's one of the guys that had a wild life down in all over the place. I don't know about you that. You probably don't remember no, that. Don't remember. That was an old, overly old podcast, like six okay. months, eight months ago. Old, they were talking, ancient, man. <laughs> yeah, that's half, three quarters of a world ago. Yeah. Remember they were talking about uh, how they would, oh, how to talk to the police without um, getting yourself in trouble. Oh, I think I do remember something like that. Yeah, yeah. it was quite funny because they, they had, Spent their formative years as scoundrels. Yes. <laughs> so they like to say, so they knew exactly so they knew what how to, do. to talk to the border yeah. patrol, how to lie to the police without yeah. getting caught, things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was <laughs> quite a funny conversation. <laughs> oh man. But now, yeah, he's very fully, totally convinced it's all going to be necessary. In his words, you have to find your tribe. Yeah. You have to. Mm-hmm. You say you cannot stress it enough. It sounds like what I've been saying for the past yes, two years. It's exactly the same thing you've been saying. And the Hopi prediction thing. What is that called? The prophecy. Yeah. That's same. exactly what he said. The You're time of the long walk is over. You're in that time right now. Yeah. Right. And uh, t- if it is five days or six days or nine days or two weeks or a month or tomorrow, mm-hmm. if you have... You know, somebody said to me, you're forcing people to gather in tribes and because you're giving them fear, you tell them, in, them is, you know, you, you, you're putting all this fear into the community to say, you know, if you're a lone wolf, you're screwed and all this type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. That's not my message. People like to have food. They like to have shelter and water, mm-hmm. right? They like to feel good. Yeah. Right? And... The society that we're stepping into yeah. is not going to provide that for you unless you jab yourself, right? Yes, you can stay isolated by yourself, not having any contact or tribe or whatever. Will you die? Of course, probably not, right? I doubt it. Well, but honestly, it, I don't know how many, how long, how often any of the... I just watched the boy live in a month with his friend in the mountains of, um, mountains of, uh, Canada, Rocky Mountains. Mm-hmm. He 
try to live a month off of the land. They ate trout every day, except for the days they didn't catch any trout, <laughs> which were Hello. more than <laughs> more than a few days, because even though the lake was full of trout, and that's all they did all day was <laughs> try to catch a trout so they could have some dinner and then hopefully leftovers for breakfast. Then they had to eat the greens that were growing, but the greens looked like weeds to me. I don't I think people who want you to stay long know. wolves... First of all, he wasn't alone. He had a friend, okay? Probably a cameraman, too. I don't know. No, it was just two of them. Just two of them? At least it was two. Now, the other thing is, I'm not saying that they should go into the wilderness and these people are going to survive or not in the wilderness. Yeah, they're not. No. They're probably going to be in the cities or living in the forest by themselves or whatever. But it's like... Nobody's going to force you to be part of a group and support that group. Nobody's going to force you to do that. But I think that attitude of, oh, it's fearful and telling me that I'm not going to survive if I don't join a tribe, is very passive and very, what can you do for me? Energy, hmm. right? What can you do for me? Which is not the energy when you step into the new paradigm. Hmm. The new paradigm is, what can we do for each other? Your strength is my strength and my strength is your strength. It's not just give me, give me, otherwise I'm going to die like a little child, right? Right, you bring... We're talking about adults here. We're not talking about children, right? Yeah, of course children, you have to feed them, clothe them and everything. And the best you can do is a stunt drum and they get back, you know? Mm -hmm. We're talking about adults. So if a person says... Oh yeah, but I'm going to survive by myself. I'm perfectly fine by myself. And I say, oh yeah, but you open your faucet. Thousands of people work for you to be able to open your faucet and water comes out. You're not by yourself. That's an illusion. That's true. All the clothes you're wearing, I doubt very much whether you knitted them. <laughs> and even if you had, did you grow the sheep, <laughs> sheep and do the wool and everything? No, I don't think so. What about your shoes? So what you're saying is you, even if you're a lone wolf, you already did join a tribe. It's just not a tribe of high frequency people. Right. And it's not going to support you. That's probably anymore. not going to support you anymore. Okay. Because they have their rules have and their regulations rules. and engagement and rules of engagement. You know, they have their own rules of engagement. You want to be part of that tribe. You're going to have to do X, Y, and Z. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you don't want to be part of that tribe, you better find yourself another tribe because otherwise you're going to have a hard time putting shoes on your feet or even getting water from your faucet. Because that's the way it's going. That's the way it's going. Where everybody's going to be chipped or whatever in order to be able to shop. Yeah, that and to Lucifer get water. Ray stuff they put in the Kool-Aid, it shows Luc up in your blood vein. So when yeah. you go buy a monitor... It can tell whether you have any of that in your blood or not. Right. It's not a big stretch to think they could put that in front of places that, <laughs> that they don't want you to go That is the plan. In. Will they be able to achieve it? I actually don't think so. I don't think, I think they're going to achieve it. maybe in a few it. places. In a few... Uh, probably Australia already has it. <laughs> probably they do. Yeah. yeah. There are a few places on Earth where I think they're going to manage it. The full, full the on, full on big on brother plan. thing. Yeah. You know, 1984 book, whatever, you know, all those things, they probably will. I don't think they're going to manage it here in the United States. But sh they sure enough are managing they're to sure trying all the way to remove the a lot of the population. What? Yeah, they're sure trying all the way to the deadlines. The deadlines yeah. like right now, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the repercussions for the pushing really, really hard or starting to show up. But I don't know if they're unintentional anyway or intentional. And anyways, all of the talk and all of it all comes back to the same thing in the end, which is which paradigm are you picking? Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. that's all it's for. Right. It's just for picking your paradigm. I can tell you right now that in the high-frequency paradigm is about connection, right? Now, yes. if you love being a lone wolf, I can tell you that the shamanic lineages are about connection, mm -hmm. right? Because long wolf people always think, oh, wolf and whatever is, you know, shamanic or I'm spiritually advanced and blah, blah, blah. 
you know, I'm a lone wolf, you know, I find it very, very, very uncomfortable to be around people, extremely uncomfortable. But I figured out that indulging in my lone wolfness doesn't help anyone. You wouldn't be listening to this podcast if I indulged in my lone wolf. <laughs> That's okay? Wrong. Trust me, no. It wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, we wouldn't. No. You would be happy off in the Where wherever, wherever, all by yourself. Yes. Who knows what time, day, or night it is? Yep. And boy, you probably needed a haircut. Yep. Well, you wouldn't need a haircut because you no, wouldn't care what your hair looked like. No, you would I just wouldn't. tie it up and chop it with some scissors. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you'd be eating Dorito, Doritos and Coca Cola. Yes, not I lived Coca-Cola in six months anymore. with that. No, no, because it's called the nanobots. Yeah, it's not so good. The now. nanoparticles or whatever. Same thing with the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I have the same inclinations. My preference would be, you know, I'll go jump on my uh, little oh. island. Your boat. It's a <laughs> traveling <fishing>. island. <laughs> yeah. I have my own private cabin. Yes. And everybody else go to the other side of the boat. That's where you live. I'll live yes. in the back. Yeah, we'll go out. I'll come out every now and again, feed you some food and smile and okay, see you later. Go back to my cab. Yeah. Yeah, that that's fine with me. I could do that for thirty years. You have been I doing could that do for that for thirty, 30 years. years. <laughs> Not much socializing in that. No. But I didn't do uh, anything but, you know, exist on my island to read a lot of books and listen to... Drank a lot of beer. (laughs) That wasn't on the boat. Oh. (laughs) I learned my lesson on that. Don't do that. So when you come out of your island, you drank a lot of beer. Then you drink a lot of beer because then is when you have to encounter people. Remember we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, we did. Is oftentimes empathic, sensitive people will end up drinking alcohol or stuff. Yeah, and being a drug addict and alcoholics... The, because they want to deaden all their sensitivity. Hmm. So it's it's pretty common. Yeah. So why deadening sensitivity brings in demons? I don't know. It doesn't seem fair. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because you were jabbed as a kid. Oh, yeah. I had all those things too. Yeah. They got all those aborted fetus materials in there. Well, it's kind of probably like, it's probably like one of those setups. It's a setup, man. You get born onto this planet, have this high hopes and ideals and ideas of how it's going to be, and then to get here. And the first thing they the do for the little boys is chop their wieners. <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't start out good at all. And it doesn't get the, better well, to the be biggest, sensitive. The biggest shock ever designed <laughs> to submit men to authority. That's what it's made for. Well, it freaking works. <laughs> And after that, they fill your, pump your body full of nasty poisons to make you weak if, of mind and body. All these injections. Yeah, I did get lucky. My dad looked out for us, had a giant organic garden before anybody even knew what organic meant. I meant jabs, though. Yeah. He I'm pretty you. sure we got jabs. Yeah. Besides all that. <laughs> no victims here. It's the planet and the way that it's designed. If you want to have these light, dark experiences, those are kind of the things you have to do to light beings in order to get it to work. Otherwise, you wouldn't have Otherwise you any wouldn't do it. type of light, dark experience. You wouldn't engage experience. with it whatsoever. Separation is yeah. part of the light, dark paradigm. The illusion of separation, I should say, because there is no real separation. Plus the part where you incarnate and start you get this case of amnesia about a lot of stuff. Yeah, it's like a weird? solid case. Yeah, doesn't matter what you had in mind when you first got here. It's, it's beyond you to remember. Yeah, it's like a dream that you had two days ago that you don't even remember anymore. What was the plot of that dream? Mm-hmm. What was? It? Did I even have a dream? Yeah, that type of memory amnesia. Mm-hmm. You know, you kind of know you did because yeah. you know you dream every night. That's right. But you sure as heck can't for the life you remember it. You just have these inklings every now and then. Yep. (laughs) Well, it's a bit like that. But kind of part of the process of the existence. Without that, that would be hard to do the existence, have the experience. Yeah. You couldn't um, see something for the first time that you've seen 10,000 times, Mm. for example. Okay. 
You can't see it for the first time after seeing it 10,000 no, times. No, you can't. <laughs> if you've seen it 10,000 times. I could watch 10,000 sunsets and it will still be the first time for me. <laughs> I don't know about you. No, not me. Okay, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> or rainbow. Like, look at that again. A, we've seen thousands of rainbows. <laughs> we still stop the car and go, oh, Ooh, look, look at that. that rainbow. Can you take a picture? How do you take a picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's true. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to stop and smell the flowers, yep. look at the rainbows, watch the sunset. Uh -huh. Have those experiences. The experiences you came here to have are high-frequency experiences. Definitely. The ones that you kind of ended up having that weren't high-frequency. Yeah, it's because you made wrong choices. Nature. That's the nature of You when, made wrong choices. Hey, I can't help those wrong choices. You can help those wrong choices, but you made them. How am I going to help those wrong choices? They're even not even now. They're like decade ago yeah but nowadays you can but nowadays i do exactly but then a days i didn't no because you were not street smart enough right but we're I not wasn't. omnipotent when we come in we've you know amnesia and we don't have to have the rules of engagement and no and our mentor didn't show up right who knows who they were supposed to be i know they didn't even nothing what Nothing. Nothing? No, there wasn't. I had one high school teacher who I could consider maybe would be mentor status. Uh huh. But I got about two hours a day for one school year with them. Yeah. That ain't enough. No, that's not enough. No. So I think in our new paradigm, maybe we should have uh, better mentor statuses. We should aim as adults to be those good mentors for the new generations. Okay. So one of the reasons not to be a lone wolf, honestly, is because your wisdom is necessary. Necessary. Not and just for you. Shared, no, it's yeah. for us too. Exactly. So come on. Yeah. Get out of there. You know, <laughs> it ain't easy for me to sit here and talk. I mean, <laughs> it's, it easy. Is. it's easy it for me is. to sit here and talk. <laughs> it is. It's, it's very easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy for me. My nature isn't to sit here and talk on a microphone thing. Oh, yeah. It took me two years to convince you. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say. It's not, it wasn't like, oh, just sit there and start talking. No, it was not. No, I was like, it was like let's process. do a podcast. And he, what, well, me? you no, do a podcast. No. I'd be happy to listen to you talk. Yeah. But yeah. But what so, do I have to say? <laughs> <laughs> apparently a lot. Yeah. <laughs> apparently I have a lot <laughs> to say. Yes, you do. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. It was so funny because it's called driving to the res because we'd have these amazing conversations while we were driving to the res and, or out of the res. <laughs> and, yeah. um, long drives, right? The closest town is two, one and a half hours away. So we were spending a lot of time in the car. We have these amazing conversations and I kept telling Larry, yeah, we should record these. I mean, people would love to hear all these conversations, love to hear this stuff. And it's like, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. <laughs> and then after a couple of times, I tried to take out a, the phone to try and record it. And you're like, zip, 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 I don't, I don't really Learn. have anything to talk what? about. What? <laughs> Nothing <Nope>. comes to <laughs> mind. <laughs> that was funny. Right. It truly really was. So we worked, we worked on it for two yeah, years. And then work. one day yeah, you said, okay. Let's do it. All right. You said. <laughs> <laughs> you were right it has helped yes right and tons of people talk about how much this helps you know yeah so imagine if i was to indulge my lone wolf it wouldn't happen we wouldn't have these we conversations we wouldn't have these conversations how about if you indulged your lone wolf <sighs> yeah who would see you nobody 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 uh -uh -uh -uh. <laughs> right so you see it's not just about you I guess is the point. Exactly. <laughs> gotcha, this new paradigm huh? is not about you. It's not just about you. I would say it's not about you, period. Okay, okay. it's not about <laughs> you, period. <laughs> well, you are included, though, so it's a kind of about you. Ah. Oh, it's not about you. Think they get it yet? No, I don't think so. You'll have to it's not it about too. you. No. What is it about?
It is about us. Very good. There you go. Do you understand now? Yes. I understand. Yes. It's almost like the light bulb went off. <laughs> ooh, I could tell when you went, ooh. <laughs> ooh. I hope the light bulb's going off in your heads too. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's not about you, it's about us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think I'm speechless from now. Okay. Are you complete, honey? I am. I am complete. Just remember, strength. Strength. Strength is the card. And even in the card, it wasn't about a single person. No, it was wasn't. Enough. Yeah. Okay, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to my wolf. Yes. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> He's this big. How about yours, honey? Which one? Your um. Remember um. Not what's a different. What's the hellhound turned into? <laughs> Lighthound. <laughs> Lighthounds. <laughs> yeah. Do you have your lighthounds still? I do. I have. Let me see. Let me count them. Uh, I have five, but two of them are very close to me, and the other three just roam the perimeters. Excellent. Now we have to have a whole conversation about. Lighthounds and hellhounds. <laughs> Maybe next time. We'll I think talk next about those time. Things. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, um, absorbing us. <laughs> yes. And what it means to say it's not about you. Uh -huh. When you say it and then it, yeah. it sinks in. If it sinks in and now you get it. Then you really get it. Then you really get it. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Oh, you're welcome, darling. I love you. I love you too.